Welcome. My name is Dr. Stephen Herod, and I would like to present to you today fitting a distribution within process model. What I will present first, I'm going to build a very, very basic process within the process model simulation software. Just something simple and short to demonstrate some features. Then I'm going to take some sample data from within this spreadsheet and we are going to fit a probability distribution to that sample data because we would like to get a probability distribution that will mimic that sample data and yet create a broader range of possible scenarios by randomly simulating other scenarios that are similar in characteristics to the sample data that we have collected. Then after I have fit those distributions, I am going to program those distributions into the simulation model. And then finally, we'll quickly demonstrate that the simulation model runs. So let's first start by launching process model in our start menu, process model 5. Here we go. There we go. So we now have a blank process model screen. Now space is a little tight here. I have the screen resolution set very small to create this video. So things are a little bit cramped. We don't quite have as much workspace as you probably do on your screen. So first let's create a very basic simulation model. First, we need some people. We need some entities. We need an entity, a person to arrive. So I'm going to select this from our little drawing box here, our tool selection here. Click and drag. And sometimes this is a little, there we go. It's a little bit slow to react because of the video recording software I'm using. So things are just a little bit less responsive for me than they should be for you on your computer. So we now have an entity label, an entity, a person. I can close this. Don't need that anymore. OK. Now, let's do something. Let's uh, provide something for this person to do or be serviced by. Uh, some kind of order counter, some kind of a place this person is going to to receive services. Not very exciting, just a big box, but it's good enough. Now we need to connect the person to the service they're receiving. And we have a connector line right here. And let's connect the person to the service. And there's our connection right there. Now it happens to be in process model that this connector line is where we define the quantity of people and the frequency with which those people come into our service. And in fact, if you highlight this line and then double click, there are all the settings for this line. Whoops, it went away. Sorry, I kind of spoke too soon. Let's get my arrow back. Let's bring it back up again. There we go. Much better. There we go. So we'll stay within this window right here. We would like this to be a periodic arrival very similar to a very basic MM1Q. This is a single server, single uh, process, single uh, chain queue, exponential arrivals, uh, exponential or Poisson or ex, uh, Poisson arrivals, exponential service time. Although we may discover from our sample data that uh, the process we're modeling is in fact not quite that kind of uh, queue. It may not be exponential at all. We'll find out here very shortly. But periodic arrivals, right now this is set for a fixed 15 minutes between arrivals. What we want to do is replace that with a probability distribution, a random time between arrivals. And we want to, what we need to do is type in the proper code the proper programming code to represent the distribution that we want to put in there. We'll get to that here again in a minute. So let me close this box. Now let's take a look also at the process. 
double click same kind of thing here's our process and here's the important part here is the time that this process takes to complete right now again this is defaulting to a fixed time one minute to perform this process and again we want to replace this with a random value we want a random distribution there we have to code that in with the proper language for process model and we'll get to that here right now so let's close that so how are we going to do this how are we going to get these probability distributions into these pieces of the model well what we need to do first of all we have our sample data right here here's our sample data we have some sample data about the arrivals between persons the time between arrivals and we have some sample data for the time that it takes each person to receive their service to get their food receive their uh, permits pick up their dry cleaning whatever where did this data come from well in this case I'm giving it to you but in the real world well you probably took a time clock a stopwatch went and visited the location and stood there with your stopwatch and clocked the number of minutes between each arrival that you viewed that you saw same thing with the service times stood there with a stopwatch timed how long it takes for each person to be serviced right here so you've collected that data these guys over here not worried about it not part of our demonstration in the video today so you can just ignore that only concerned about these two pieces of data today so we have this data and we want to fit a distribution to this how are we going to do that here we go back into process model tools menu come down the tools menu and here is a selection right here stat fit this is a piece of software that is going to fit a probability distribution it is a statistical fit so let's turn that on stat fit right there here we go so here is our data table what we need to do is get our data right over here click and drag let's get our arrival data first let's do that copy come back over here go right here paste there's our data and uh, I'm ready to go now there's lots of different settings up here I'm not going to go into those in detail there is quite a lot to learn up here for the very basic needs for your simple needs it's it's fine to just go with the automatic setting auto fit just go with the default don't fuss with anything else so let's select auto fit and this dialog comes up now this is real value data it has decimals it has fractions it has less than integer values so this is a continuous distribution now this distribution this these arrival times between people by definition we, we don't have a negative arrival time between persons so this distribution that we fit it needs to be bounded by zero it can't have negative values so by definition the lowest allowed value is going to be a zero when you're using your software and this dialog comes up check to see if this value is a zero for this kind of situation it may come up with some other value left over from the previous user of the software it, it tends to remember this value from its previous use so check this value this is a arrival time between people and uh, it's not going to be negative there's no such thing as negative time not in this universe anyway so I would at this point say okay and stat fit would start to fit this data I'm going to pause the video at this moment it turns out there is a technical bug and the stat fit does not like my video recording software 
So I have to pause the video, run this while the video is paused, and then I will come back to you with the result. So back in a few minutes. Hold on. Hello, I'm back. I'm back. I have I hit the OK button. It processed, and this is what you see after it's done processing. Here is our results window here. This is what it did. It looked at our data and it said, okay, here are a number of possibilities for probability distributions that might fit your data. And it has ranked them. The top one is considered better than the ones down at the bottom. The ones down at the bottom where it's red, it says reject, it's saying, you know, I really don't think these fit your data. Then as we get up here, it says, well, these might be better fits. And then as the numbers get higher, it's saying, yeah, yeah, no, this is a really good fit right here. Now, why would you pick one of these down below if it has a lower score? Probably not. But in an advanced situation, in a more advanced situation, there might possibly be a reason. I won't go into that now. There might be a reason you might pick one of these lower scoring ones. But for now, pretty safe to say pick the best one pick the one that scores the best so we're gonna pick this one there it is if you hit it click on it here it gives you a pretty graph tells you all about it little uh, diagram here highlight right there and we want to get this information and put it into process model so we're going to go file menu export export fit and it's going to give us some choices here. We're going to the application process model. This is the winner. This is the one we liked. We don't want these others. We want the one that was the good one. See over here, this is the good one. We want that one. We're going to output this to the clipboard. And look right here, this is the language. This is the proper syntax for process model. So we're going to say output it to the clipboard. Say OK. Let's go back over to process model. And this is the time between arrivals, remember? So this is our arrival, our entity arrival information right there. Let's go right over here where it says minutes. And let's paste. Right click, paste. There you go. We have now pasted the proper syntax for this distribution into process model. This is the Weibull, Weibull, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I know it's hard. I think it's Weibull, Weib, and if you're German, Viable, the Viable distribution, but no, Viable. And that's all correct right there. We're going to save that, just close this box, looks good. Now we need to repeat this process for the assembly time. So we're going to do this all over again, click and drag, all right, copy, back over to StatFit, get rid of this. Get rid of this. Uh, let me, let's get rid of this. No. Let's start a new one. New. Here we go. Paste. All right, there we go. Ready to go again. Auto fit. Once again, these are service times. There's no such thing as a negative service time. So we want to bound this by zero. The lowest value is zero. I'm going to have to leave you again for a minute because once again my video recording software has a bug and it conflicts with this so I have to leave you while I process this I'll be right back. Hello we're back okay I have just fitted I have said okay and I have fitted the distribution this is for the service time let's take a look at this window again once again we've got a whole bunch of choices here and uh, some ones that are not so good and some others that are much better. So here, this time around, the software is suggesting the Pearson, Pearson 5 distribution. So let's click on that. There's our Pearson 5. Same thing again. We're going to export. Export the fit. Process model is our destination. The distribution we want to pick is Pearson 5, because that's the winner of our search here. Here's the proper code. Output to the clipboard. OK. 
over to process model double click and paste there we go we have fitted the distribution and pasted it in the proper syntax into the activity process time we'll close this box and we're ready to go we're ready to go here okay so let's run this simulation it's under the simulation dialog let's set some options I don't really feel like running this for the equivalent of 40 hours so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit let's just run a shorter simulation let's run it for uh, 10 hours and that looks good close simulation save and simulate let's make it go I'm gonna save this where I want it put this in with my other let's save it right here and right here and right here and demonstration and it is simulating if you look up to the right there is the clock time right there so we told this to run for 10 hours and we're now at four hours and change right here so it's simulating moving its clock time along 20 people have been processed so far typical service time is uh, let's see here value added time 14 a little bit under 14 minutes the queue as you can see is not oh we're all done already as you can see I was gonna say down here this was the length of the queue right there I believe and it wasn't much so let's see the results and there's our results Well, I'm going to stop here because I have completed my goals. I uh, don't want to get into the details of how to read this report in this video. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it very much. We'll talk to you again now. Bye-bye.